Recording begins now. Hi, everybody. So I'm being called to the canvas, and the word that came to me right now is let the waters flow. I've been listening to a sermon from the First Baptist Church, Lincoln Gardens in Somerset, New Jersey. And, the, and it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, sermon I've been listening to from Sunday. And it talks about Hannah from 1 Samuels 2, 1, the story of Hannah. And how she cries out to God and she does it. She goes to she goes to the sanctuary, she goes to the temple, and she's outside of the temple and she's praying without mm -hmm. volume. Her lips are moving. Her story is an amazing story, how she's been criticized and oppressed by other women. I'm going to close my door because my husband's in the other space and his den, I'm in the, I'm in my art space. So I want to close the door so you're not hearing him speak. Okay. So he's actually um, gathering with some other people. So I want to close the door. So give me just one. Oh. Okay. So the story of Hannah is, is so profound for me right now. And I've been in prayer about what God wants, what God wants from me, from this story. So she's outside of the temple, right? So she's being oppressed by other women, women who have, and she doesn't. And actually it's women who have children and she doesn't. And She's outside. So they mock her and they make fun of her. And these are women who, who, uh, who are in her, who are in the community that she belongs to. And they gather together and they mock her and they make fun of her and they oppress her with her work with their words. And it makes her feel really bad. And so she's outside of the temple and she's crying and she's mm -hmm. um, and she's praying, but her lips aren't moving. I'm sorry, her volume, her lips are moving, but her volume isn't heard. And so the preach, one of the preachers is sees her and he tells her, you know, why don't you put down that drink? He says, she or she or drunk. He says, she's drunk. You know, put down your drink and find God. And she says to him, no, my Lord, I am not drunk. I am praying to God. And so, <laughs> it's such a profound story, y'all. It's a profound story because it speaks about for me, what it speaks about is how we as women, we need to lift each other up. We need to be there to malama, to care for women, right? Just because you have something, you know, I mean, who am I, who are we to be judging of others in a harsh way to mock people? You know, we do it in our heads. We do it with our words. Some for us, some of us, we get strength in when we're with other women to mock others rather than ask God for the grace that's needed so we can be there to help each other. So many times in my life, this has something, this is something I've experienced as somebody who has been mocked. You know, the ways of the world, the way our hair looks, the way our clothes look the way we speak, the color of our skin. The way we do things. So take a breather and ha, ha through that. 
ah, right? It's so powerful how we can say we have love in our hearts. And yet, where's the grace for our sisters? In this time of celebrating the woman this month in America, we are celebrating Women's History Month. What's coming to me is so much about this. The regulation of celebrating women just in one month, right? As that has been um, shared by others of ethnicities where there is a celebration of a month regulated to one month, people can take that stand of, well, I don't wanna be regulated just one. Okay, so you know what? <laughs> My stand is this, yay, we get to sell. Hey, it's another time to celebrate for me. Any chance to celebrate for me is awesome, okay? <laughs> so as I'm sitting here, today's Wednesday, it's March 13th, and I am into the year to the, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Amen. Wednesdays is a time that I set aside for writing. So as I've been writing and uh, and I'm writing on my website, my story. If you haven't been there, please go. Please read my story. Please know who I am. God put it on my heart to create this website, to share my story and my offerings with others. And as I'm praying this this morning, God, what do you want me to say on this website? Right? I'm, re, you know, I'm adding to it, taking away from it, you know, and I have fun doing it. And y'all, I want to inspire you that if this is something that you're called to, if you're inspired to do this, you've been wanting to, check out Canva. It's easy, it's fun, it's creative. It's a chance for us to write our own story. And this is why the story of Hannah is so inspiring to me. And I'm gonna paint in just a moment because God's calling me to paint with him right now. And he's also calling me to share the story. So I'm wanting to share this story. And so the story of Hannah is so inspiring because she, in her own strength is like in her own confidence in her own confidence she said to to the to the preacher no my lord i am speaking to god i am not without <laughs> as they mock me and tell me i'm without whatever right bring it to modern time mock me for i am without right i don't speak your language of christianity i don't speak your language that you know that of churches and how church people do because my gifts are my own i am called in a different way than you so i'm here to inspire you that's my story with How Creative Mystics Wisdom School and Manavahine Sanctuary. Come, let's discover your gifts. I'm here to share how I've done it, how God helped me to do it and to move in it with expanded love. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this, okay? Have you discovered your gifts? Do you know what they are? Are you expanding in it? I'm choosing to expand in it to help others. I'm choosing to step in it to help women. So in celebration of Women's History Month, we are celebrating right now together as I share my testimony through the story of Hannah and what has been revealed to me, what I am coming forward in about my story, that it doesn't matter now the way I used to be that I had to form, transform into others' containers, into others' construct, into others' narrative. And this is the way we do it in our church. Well, guess what? The word talks about churches and nations. I'm my own. Jesus came to bring sovereignty 
to me and my life. This morning, I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking breakfast for Tony and I. Made a great bowl of oatmeal because that's what I was called to do. And so um, as I'm cooking and I'm listening to this message about Hannah, I was so provoked by the languages of oppression, how we, I need to be mindful. We need to be mindful of what we're listening to. I did a video, go back and watch it from yesterday. Being mindful of what I'm listening to, what I'm surrounding around. And sometimes what I'm finding currently, as God called me to learn about Jesus, God didn't say learn about Christianity. Where I can honor and definitely appreciate, there is a lot of teachings in the Christian uh, companies that offer teachings of Jesus. However, that's not what God told me to do. God told me to learn about Jesus. So yeah, I'm going to make, I've navigated, you know, I'm a sojourn. I navigate. I navigate where God tells me to go. Not where a church is going to tell me where to go. Not where a narrative tells me to go. I've been seeing some crazy stuff on the internet recently. And I'm like, ooh, that got my attention. And guess what? It's supposed to get my attention. That's what it's designed for. But I need to stay focused. And right now, I'm being focused on this painting. God gave me a word. Let's, let the waters flow. So I've been singing this, let the waters flow, let the waters flow, let the waters flow, let the waters flow. This is my rhythm. Okay. So I'm going to work. And God gave me the message as I was trying to figure out the colors that I'm going to use. And so I picked, I put, pulled three and then I, you know, was getting ready, put it on my palette. Here it is. This is the one God told me to do. So that's there. All right, so as I continue this story, I'm gonna start painting. So I'm gonna wet this down with water. This is part of my painting a season. I'm in the winter hemisphere, I'm in the Northern hemisphere, so I have winter happening right now. And for those of you in the Southern hemisphere, you are in uh, fall, sorry, you're in summer. And so I'm staying present and we are all staying present with this process of the season that you're in. The season that I'm in right now is I'm learning about the story of Hannah and what that means in my life. And I'm gonna share more with you right now. I'm gonna wet the canvas. Painting a season is about painting with what God tells me to do. This is what has happened so far for this season. I'm completely being led by God and God's, God's got the wheel on this one. And why I'm doing this? It's because it's to help sharpen our hearing, sharpening hearing, right? I got another revelation about cleanliness, body, hygiene. This is your temple. This is how God speaks to us. One of the ways. It's the main way. It's how we operate. Can't do anything else without, we can't do anything else unless we care for this, right? All right, so here's what I've got. I got water. Now, this is my water that I put my brushes in. Okay, so the water is tinted with all the colors that have been, I've already put on the canvas. Why am I using that? I'm using it because we know it in the teachings of intentional creativity, which is what I'm weaving in. It's part of my teaching that I'm passing on to you is that this is called the mother color. 
pretty cool. It's a pretty cool name. All righty, so I've got a wet brush. This is the brush I'm using. I'm dipping it in the color, and the color I'm using is manganese blue hue. I love this color. By the way, manganese is found in the ocean, which, hello, I'm going to be painting the water right now. I might be painting more. Um, what am I painting, God? Am I just painting the water or am I doing it at all? I'm called to do just the water in, okay? So, taking this. Putting it all on the water. The way that I'm doing this is I'm leaving a little space around the face. Why? I've been called to do that. You do what you're called to do, but I can tell you this in my painting style, it is what we call the glow. And even here where this section here is, I'm leaving a little bit of space here. I'm not going all the way to the edge. Okay. And I'm taking this color to the edge, doing my edging on this side too. And I can't do the bottom right now, but we're just going to leave it like that. Okay. All right. Now here's another tip is that if you, you'll still have color here. What we're going to work on is this. Yes, this is a painting that's being created. Okay. <laughs> my palette but um we also work with we me us is is another palette and we call this the composting canvas sorry not a palette but composting canvas and what we do is you're actually creating a new painting without even knowing it but actually you do it with faith okay so i'm going to just lay this here on my chair that i've got Chloe on right here. You won't be able to see her. Let me, let me, let me. Yeah, there she is. Hey, Chloe. Hey, Chloe. Chloe, Chloe. All right. And then what I'm doing is taking this color and I'm going to just add it. Add it, you know. Add it to the canvas. I'm just going to add it right here where the greenies are, just in some spots. Okay, so when we do this, once again, listening to what God wants, this is a complete exercise, y'all, in being present with what God is telling me to do and do it with faith. So this workshop of paint a season, painting a season workshop is so important for me right now. And for those of you who are interested, the spring class, the spring workshop will begin on March 20th. And um, that is the start of the spring season in the Northern Hemisphere. And for those who are in the fall as well, okay? So if you're interested in doing this painting for spring, it's not the same. Okay, so here's how it goes. It's not about me teaching you my painting. It's about you. I will guide you to how I do this. We do it live on Zoom, okay? And how it works is that I'm going to be demonstrating how I do it to give you an idea and other ways that I'm going to demonstrate how to do it but you are gonna do a painting based on what God tells you to do. And you do it with faith. It sharpens your faith, your language with God, your communication with God, your relationship with God. Okay, so there's my manganese. 
Okay, right, so whatever is left here, I'm going to go ahead and also being called to put it here. Wet it. And have faith in it. And everything will be okay. Now, here's what I also like to do. And I was taught this process by an artist who's an indigenous woman of the Métis community in Canada. She is a brilliant artist. Go check out her work. Her name is Charlotte Easton. And what she suggests is to, what she likes to do is wherever she puts her color, she puts it on three sides of her canvas. So I put it on this side, this top, as I just added some manganese, okay? And then on this side and this side. So there's three, one, two, and three. Okay. And then you take a breather because you got to breathe a lot. You got to ha a lot. Ha, the breath of connection, the breath to God, the breath to your connection, your body, the earth, God, all God, okay? I'm gonna let that dry. You just see how it added some depth? Yeah. I'm gonna take a picture and that's something you wanna do too is take a picture of your work. I always take three. Three is one of those things that I, I just do. <laughs> oh, let me take a sip of water. And let me continue sharing about Hannah. Yeah. Hey, so as I'm with this, and I've been with this for since Sunday, since the word came, right? Since I since I saw the sermon. And I've been studying, I've been in it because that's the thing, right? When you're trying to build a relationship with God, one of the things to consider is when God sends you a message, be with it, be committed to that. Give God space, expand that space. You're expanding your relationship with God. When you hold space, God's trying to talk to us in so many ways, y'all gotta make space that's how I do it I stay in it I write down the scripture in my planner my daily planner my calendar also in your in your in your uh journal that we're working with write it in it and allow this to be an extension of the languages coming to you. You see, this is what God's talking to me about. Is how I have allowed without even knowing, but this is it. This is the magic. That's why we got to be ready, right? Be ready for the language. Be ready for the message that God has for us. God told me just now, let the waters flow. I'm like, okay, well, all right. Can, you know, that was what I was called to do painting. And so now it's uh, sharing about this amazing story of Hannah and how Hannah, you know, her husband sees her crying. She's crying. She's so sad. Why is she sad? Because she has a desire. God's not made that way for her yet. 
And so she's crying out, right? She's being mocked. She's deep sadness. Not only does she have a desire in her heart, but she's being oppressed by women and who say that, you know, they, they're full of love. But then she's being oppressed by, in a way, by her husband, by his language to her. Why are you so sad? I give you all these things. You got nothing to be sad about. Oh my gosh, that just... She loves him so much, right? And he provides for his, apparently they're wealthy and, you know, they have some, they have a lot, they have more than others. <laughs> um, and so he tells her, well, you, I give you so much, you know, I give you so much. I give you more than I give my other wife who has children because she's favored. <sighs> okay, so my point to this is, is this what I learned in this scripture is that I need to lay down the relationships I have with the nouns, person, places, and things that continue the voice of oppression. Sometimes I gotta just say bye. Sometimes the relationships that I've had in the past with organizations, particularly with women, the language has been so perpetuated in these businesses clubs, organizations, where they continuously to perpetuate the language of oppression, and yet they're speaking the words of, we're here to help you. But if you're feeling lonely and sad, and this is a means of, of helping you. So we have to learn how to be like, okay, when is it a time, when is it time for me to shift when is it going to be a time for me to shift this? No longer speak the language of my people were oppressed. I came from my Asian people, my Kanaka people. They're being oppressed. Okay, so when am I going to live in the sovereignty? When am I going to choose to live in the sovereignty, the spirit of I'm already healed? What is my calling on my life? What next? What is my what next? What is my now and what is my what next? Let's talk through that. And by no means am I saying that if you're called in your life to help people, particularly in the arenas where there is great oppression going on and you're called, your job, your job is to help. Awesome, beautiful, but what I'm speaking to is your spirit. Because for me, my story is everything is a season. To everything, there is a season. Song of Solomon. Song of Song. Song of Solomon. To everything, there is a season. That song that's been playing regularly through the years. To everything, there's a season and a purpose under heaven. So I don't know who wrote that song. It's a great pop song. But there is scripture in it. That's what the song is based on. So uh, for me, just to remember that that's how my life is, right? For us, everything is a season, right? My story, my story last week isn't the same story, or is it? My story... Is it the same story thir for 30 years of oppression? No, it ends today. And here's the message that I got. As I'm cooking my oatmeal, as I said, what God said to me was, and showed me in pictures and images in my head. 
pictures of my grandparents, my Filipino grandparents, who loved me and helped raise me. They went through so much oppression, but they never spoke it. They never spoke it. They always spoke hope to me. They all spoke the better for me. They wanted the best for me all the time, right? Okay, that was a reminder. And that, that language of being in the environments of, with that continuous language of our people are oppressed, that theme, it's time for me to shift and pivot. If you're struggling with da, 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 do you know what that, that's a spirit. I'm sorry, but that is a spirit. And I'm apologizing because this is going to offend some people. And the reason that I'm sharing it is because it's on my heart and because I'm being called to it in my life to, yes, you, you go, you know, God sends me to these places, but I remember the language he said, you're only there temporarily. It's not a place to stay. You're a sojourner. You're here to learn. Right now, you're called to learn who Jesus is. So the propensity of the human experience, the human humanness is, I want to belong with Hannah. I want to belong. These are my girls. I belong with them. We hang out together. We, we share God together. Okay. We're artists together. We hang. We're we of the same race, we have the same color. We hang, hey, she's my girl. To love people individually is for some, it's very easy. But I dare say this. Do you really love them? Huh. Or is it a desire of your heart? Because there's a difference between desire and love. We got to get this straight, y'all. I love saying y'all right now. So I have people in Texas and the South. They use it. I used to live in the South. Tennessee, lived in Florida. I like saying y'all. You know what? People used to say at one time. People used to say at one time, that is not proper English. Don't use that. And don't say ain't. If that's not proper English. Okay. So that was a time when there was great dominance, right? I'm not here for that. Once again, this is a story of the how I used to be, right? Operate out of oppression, because it's oppressive to say that. Because we come from different regions. We come from different places. We speak languages of those places. Just as I'm sharing with you. I lived, I lived I, born on Kauai. There's a dialect there that's different from the dialect of Oahu. That's different from the United States of America or any other country. In America, to say ain't and y'all, those are from regions. Why do we need to press that? We don't. It's who we are. It's part of the acceptance part of my acceptance and this is it for me to live in my boldness that I know who I am that yeah I moved to those places I lived in those places and you know what I'm so grateful that I had a chance to experience those cultures because it's brought me to where I am today the story of Hannah right she got all this coming at her and all she wants is desire in her heart for a child. And she keeps crying out to God. Well, it's not about our time. Sometimes. Sometimes we just gotta be, we just gotta wait. Just keep praying and wait. Sometimes it's not even for us. Sometimes. God doesn't want that for us. That doesn't mean God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean God doesn't want me because 
God doesn't love me. I mean, because, um, I don't have an empire. I don't have, uh, a, you know, mass appeal. That's been my struggle. It's been my story. I want mass appeal. I want what my other art friends have. They have mass appeal. They, you know, they got an em They've got empires based on their art. That's what God gave them. Yeah, that's their gift. And let's celebrate them. Let's not be the mockers, women. Let's sisters. Let's not be the mockers. Let's raise us up and go, girl. Good for you. Amen. God bless you. God's blessing me in a different way too. You want to know how? What God showed me today is I need to flow. Let the waters flow. I'm painting it. I got a class that I'm teaching about what's God done for me in my life. And um, I'm going to teach people how to paint a season to be present and connect with God through the language of creativity in their own way so women can find their own creative signature, their own uniqueness, their own beauty, and allow God to speak to them through painting, just as God does for me. I'm going to share people how to do that. Not only that, I'm able to paint right now in an amazing way. And God's blessed me with this life where I could be here in this art space while my husband's over there in his creative space. And we're creating together individually, appreciating each other just as we individually are in our own spaces through love. So in this dance that I do with this painting is light and dark. You lay down a light color, you lay down a dark color, okay? So I considered this somewhat of a dark color, but I mixed it, right? So it's darker than white, light, yellow, okay? So you wanna get yourself one of these. Okay, and so it's, an, it's a wheel, color wheel. It's major, it's a major tool, all right? And so when we look at light and darkness, right? So it's a matter of, and I don't have the jargon just right. So if I get it wrong, y'all, I'm sorry. Please give me grace. Okay. So light and dark colors. So it's based on how much uh, light color. So white isn't a color, all right? I mix this with my mother color, mother color which is the, the water of the paint based on, see that, of all the different colors. I took my brush that was wet and I mixed it with this color so it created it dark on the canvas. And there was also red there. So here's the thing, is that when you mix, okay, so there was green, red, and I added blue to it. Okay, so it created darkness. Do you see the darkness there? That's what I want. But do I need to put another layer on here of manganese? Okay, so let me do one more layer. So this time I'm being called to put on manganese and crushing blue. So this is an amazing color. And you're gonna find paint colors that you are drawn to, that you love. And then as you continue painting with me, if you choose to, then you're gonna find that you have a signature. You have a signature, and what that means is the way that your hand creates, God creates through you, you're going to see similarities also with the color, the choices that you have, right? You're going to come, as you continue painting, if you choose to, you're going to come up with a collection, and you're going to see, wow, look at that, I can, 
the way that I make that flower, I see the curve mature. I see the way it is in other ways. And you can kind of see it in, if I were to look at just these two paintings here, this one, the earrings, right? And then the shape of my mangoes. You could see a similarity there. Yeah? Yeah. So we honor that and we celebrate that. So let me wet this down. Ooh. So I'm being called to, the next step is to do the entire painting in this dark color. And what we call this is a, <laughs> call this a glaze, okay? It's scary. I call it a glaze of faith. <laughs> I'm listening to God and God's telling me, yeah, do it, do it all. Do you want me to do both these colors, God? So I've got these two colors on the palette. I've got the manganese and then the Prussian blue. Okay, so now I'm asking God, do you want me to blend these together or just do this one and that one? So I'm being called to blend. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm gonna mix these together. You see that? Look at that beautiful color. Look at that. Ooh, here we go. Ooh, here we go. So I'm gonna start in the water and then I'm gonna work my way out. Okay. And I also wanna recommend that when you do this, that you, um, Also do the sides where you want that water to flow on the side. If you choose, I'm choosing this time. Okay, and then uh, uh, I'm wetting down my canvas. Um, and so here we go. You're gonna do you're gonna do on canvas what God tells you to do. You're not following me. I'm just demonstrating for you how I'm doing this. Because this is what God's calling me to do. Okay, so I'm taking my, uh, where's my canvas? Oh, I took my composting canvas and did it right there. Yeah, I'm listening and just doing good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you have a rag with you. Mm -hmm. Listen and see what God has for you, okay? To do. It's really important.
Amazing, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. So back to Hannah. The act of being boldness takes sometimes extreme sovereignty within yourself. What I learned through my discovery of sovereignty as God taught me through being connected with um, the Kanaka culture, Kanaka peoples, um, and their and our story, um, and the story of our of our ancestors is sovereignty. Uh, what that means, so I, you know, taking it and yes, that was part of a narrative. It's a narrative. And so what does it mean for me? And how have I, how do I create depth in my relationship with God with based on this knowledge now? This takes a lot. It's a lot of work, a lot of self-discovery, which I gladly do. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to do this work. And I'm sharing with you that it takes a lot of space. And that's what I'm called to. And that's my blessing that God's given to me that I can rest in. Is I'm blessed with this experience. And that the desires that I have once had was oppression. I've oppressed myself. I didn't have the knowledge back then of what I have today. Today's a new day. Today's the day that I'm choosing to lay down the constructs of oppression and live in a fuller means of sovereignty. And what that means is I have gratefulness. Gratefulness that I have come to this place of, okay, I'm being present. God told me, you know what? This morning, as I may don't know. Um, you don't need to hold that anymore. Just as God has in the past told me, you don't need to engage in those relationships anymore. You don't need to eat those foods anymore. It's not good for you. You don't need to be involved with that community anymore. It's oppressive. You don't need that. Come to help you. Come to help me. And I pass the story on to you with humbleness, with gratitude, that, um, and celebration that I'm here to celebrate with us, with you. How I can operate in a new way, and how you can operate in a new way, with more sovereignty, with deeper relationships with God. I'm just going to take a half or a moment and make sure I'm able that I have delivered all of the thoughts that God gave to me. And I'm praying that I get out of my way, my ego be laid down so that the manifestation of God can flow through me right now. I'm just going to take a moment to hop. The vision that God has for us, we can't, we can't, we don't know God's ways, right? I've chosen in this season 
and through the past season to release those ways that I once operated to bring me to my current and present place of operating in God's fullness. I want to be in the fold of God. And what that means has been right now, currently, to be present, to be in the moment more, to share with you this story that I don't want that anymore. It has been a stronghold in my bloodlines, my lineages, many lineages, many bloodlines, many genes lodged in it. And the way that has helped me, okay, and this is what I teach too, I teach you how to transform. Two ways that I coach integrative wellness coaching, transformative lifestyle coaching. They go hand in hand based on how I am transforming my body from being obese, high BMI, um, anxiety, unmanaged depression, extreme stress to where I'm at today. which is right where I need to be health-wise. However, I gotta be in check because the old ways are pulling me. It's pulling me back, which means I still got work to do. And I'm on the path to that. And I know if I continue to stay close to God, there's gonna be, God's gonna reveal stuff. I have faith in that what I want, the desire, it doesn't end. There's seasons that there's beautiful, you know, valleys where uh, green pastures of celebrating and I'm in it, right? I love that passage that's coming to me right now. The Lord brings me through, the, uh, what's that? Uh, through the valley, she brought me through the valley and lies being green pastures. It's like, yeah. Um, my view is valleys and green pastures. I can I can be in both at the same time. So this is it, is that my spirit, though my human experience, my blood carries the uh, the uh, oh, though my blood carries the stories of my of the people of my past, it also carries with it the hope. So there's darkness and light. There is negative and positive. It's how the universe, it's how the multiverses work. That I want to learn how to navigate that in a, in a better way. In a better way, what that means for me is more grace. And I'm choosing today the spirit of hope. I'm choosing today the spirit of sovereignty. I'm free from that. When we look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament talks about my bloodlines, their story, and the hope that they had. They've known the story of Savior's coming. Savior's coming. That's what our ancestors have told us is coming. Jesus came. Okay, Jesus came and Jesus' word says, you're free. All that stuff, you're free from it. Follow me. And you'll have, you'll thirst no more. If you don't follow me, you'll always thirst. But if you follow me, you'll never thirst again. He speaks to the woman at the well. I'm unsure where that scripture is, sorry. Um, but I know the story, and that is, He's traveled from Judea and making his way back to uh, Galilee. The story goes that his people, the Galileans, they um, they rejected him. It says his, his own brothers rejected him. Ooh. I'm going to save that story for another time in my life. <laughs> but it's a good one. And so... Um, 
right? And we can see that with Hannah, if we transfer that story, kind of like Hannah, where her sisters, her girls, they've just been hanging with them, but they've been talking bad about it. It made her feel bad. You know, making mockery comments. Girl, you ain't without child. You don't know what's going on. You you ain't, nothing's happening for you. Look at you. You're just a, you know, you're just a lonely woman. You don't know. You're not one of us. You, you just stay right there until you become one of us. So um, that kind of language, right? Kind of energy. And so uh, Jesus goes to the well, right? He stops um, in the uh, area of uh, one of his ancestors and there's a well and there's a woman there and he asked the woman he's parched and his his people his disciples have gone to get some food but he's at the well and he's parched and there's a woman there and he says give me some water and she says you don't even have a bucket brah why are you asking me for you're you're not from here you're not one of us who are you and he says to her, he goes, if you knew who I was, you would, you would have it. You would just give it. Why are you, you know, why are you talking, you know? And, sh and so that's when he tells her, you know, that I am the one called, I am, I am God. And so that's when he says, if you, if you continue on your path, you're going to continue thirsting. But if you follow me, you'll thirst no more. So. I'm going to stop this painting because I, I it needs to do what it needs to do. As it dries, as it continues drying, and I need to rest from what I just painted and what God gave me. And so I just want to close by sharing with you that my story currently is that I'm called to learn about Jesus and who Jesus is. Because God called me and told me, you're going to learn about Jesus. Learn about Jesus. That's what my path is currently. So it didn't say, you're going to learn about Christianity you see, there's a difference. Allow God to ask, ask God what that means for you in your life. Well, Christianity is wonderful and it works for some people. The structures of being part of an organization and where it has helped me as well. But that's not what God told me to do. You see, it's easy for me to belong, want to belong to a group, hang with some people that we have similarities with, but I'm different. We're made uniquely in God's image. And I'm trying to be in the place of gaining confidence, listening to God through it and not be distracted because I don't have time for distractions. I got stuff to do. <laughs> I got a story to tell. My children, people in my community, y'all, about what God's done for me and to encourage you. That's all. That's all I'm doing is to encourage you on your walk, to keep having faith, keep listening, Hearing, take care of your temple. Bathe your body every day, your hair, your skin. I don't care what anybody has said. I'm telling you this. I was a cosmetologist, licensed, two states. And I know that spirituality is everything and it attaches to everything, everything. 
We got to make sure we're clean. We're making sure we're taking care of this temple all the time. Morning time, Joe, when you wake up. Take a washcloth. Clean your ears. This is how God's talking to us. He says in his word, God says, listen, I'm sorry. I know I'm offending some of you. I said he, God to me, is speaking and it sounds like a masculine voice for me. Okay. So, um, clean your ears, the inside and outside. So you can hear, clean your body because God speaks to us in different ways. We get messages. Take care of your internals, what you put in your body, what you consume every day. Be careful. Be mindful. Don't just give yourself to, because you're, you, you have a desire for, you know, to have that taste. That's what it's been. So much of our foods have been designed to keep us addicted. Keep us addicted to those relationships that are not good for us. It's destructive. It oppresses us. God doesn't want that. He wants us to have freedom. If you want to know more about my integrative wellness coaching, as well as my transformative lifestyle coaching, go to my website, hotcreativemystics.com. It'll be in the link. Reach out to me too, hotcreativemystics at gmail.com. You want to talk? You want to share some things, you need some guidance, you need prayers. That's what I'm here for. I can pray for you. Stick with your painting. Listen. Be in your journal. Move according to how God tells you to move. And remember this. If it's love, it's God's language. If it's contrary, if it's got the if, if it's got the rhythms of condemnation, of oppression, it's not God. We got to know the difference. Be mindful of your desires versus love. What that means, ask God to show you these things. I love you. Until next time. <sighs> Let's haw it out. Let's allow the breath of God to connect us to our homes, the earth that we live in, to the body, the place that we live in, and allow God to guide us every moment of every day. May God cover you everywhere you go. And may you know more about Jesus and his messages of love for us. Take care. Aloha. This video is ending now.